In this Q&A video, we're going to be answering the question, how do I know if my building requires emergency lighting? This Q&A relates to the emergency light fittings from Knightsbridge that we featured in a recent video. They had the excellent self-test feature that makes ongoing maintenance checks really easy. So if you haven't already done so, please do go and check that video out. But we're led to the question, how do I know if my building requires emergency lighting in the first place? Well, to answer that question, we need to step outside BS 7671 and have a look at some other regulations. Now, first of all, there's the Regulatory Reform Fire Safety Order of 2005. Now, this is what's called a statutory instrument. Therefore, it's the law. If we look into Article 14, Paragraph 2, Item H, we see this direction. Emergency routes and exits requiring illumination must be provided with emergency lighting of adequate intensity in the case of failure of their normal lighting. So there we go. If you have a building that is not a dwelling and the emergency routes and exits have lighting for normal use, they must have emergency lighting in place. The order also suggests that the responsible person in charge of non-domestic premises, including the common areas of a house in multiple occupancy, is also responsible for the safety of everyone in the building, whether they are guests, workers, visitors or residents. So this means that other areas of a property might also need emergency lighting. The documentation and regulation of emergency lighting follows the so-called hierarchy of statutory provision, which basically means that the statutory document, in this case the Regulatory Reform Fire Safety Order of 2005, lays down the law, but it doesn't contain detailed guidance on how to install the emergency lighting so that it complies. That falls to additional supporting and non-statutory documents, including BS 5266-1, which is the code of practice for the emergency lighting of premises, and then guidance to this code of practice can be found in the Electrician's Guide to Emergency Lighting, published by the IET. In there, you'll find information on how to design, install, and maintain emergency lighting systems. There's lots of useful information in here, including lighting levels for escape routes, anti-panic lighting for open areas, and the reason that you may have to put two emergency light fittings into a relatively small room to allow for the failure of a lamp. While these documents may not be statutory in themselves, compliance with them will help you to comply with the law. So there we go, the need for emergency lighting and the legal responsibility to provide it. But as always, we want to hear from you on this issue. Do you think that the provision of emergency lighting is adequate under the current system? Do you think that the advent of LED lighting has improved emergency lighting installations? Please leave your thoughts and questions in the comments section below. And as always, thank you very much for watching.